awesome to arrive at Hoga. It's uh, been one of those not so pleasant passages. We had a huge front come through us. Ecstatic to be here. Anna's happy to have arrived. So we are happy to be at Hoga, man. Happy, happy, happy. Hey guys, well as usual we're very slow putting out videos but we have a number of friends cruising in Indonesia at the moment and they've been asking me to get on with the videos because they followed us to where we've stopped. So um, I'm going to try and sort of get us through Indonesia um, quicker than I've been doing the previous videos. This is basically we at Hogar Island uh, which was our last video and now we're heading down to Komodo Islands where the Komodo dragons are. Today we sailed from Hoga Island. We've sailed the whole way. We were actually told that uh, we would be using engines all the time in Indonesia. And in fact we just haven't. We've had so much wind that we have sailed the whole way. Right now into the night. We haven't had to use the engines once. Um, we've got the generator running at the moment uh, because we've got 8.5 speed. Point five speed in you know at the moment 13 14 15 knots of wind that's apparent wind and we've got the sails up and yeah we're going to be doing an overnighter uh, the one thing that has been a bit of a concern to me on this trip is that we've passed numerous fads and these fads are like bamboo rafts and they just sit out here in incredibly deep water you know we're talking like a thousand meters deep uh, we've got these fads just sitting in the middle of the ocean and i sailed right up to one and uh, the fads got a thick 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 line attached to it i mean i don't know where the guys get funding to put a line down uh, 1,000 meters. I mean, it's, it's just, it's incredible. But there they were, all lined up. One, two, three, four. Almost as if somebody had put them all along our route. And as beautiful as the sunset is, um, that is kind of like worrying when you're going into the night and there are these unlit, unmarked fads and the radar really struggles to pick them up. I've, I've actually been playing with the radar when I've seen them during daytime and I've been playing with the radar and yeah I can make them out um, but you need a lot of detail you need a high gain setting a lot of detail is on that radar screen when you're looking for it all the little waves and the wakes are picked up uh, by the radar and one has to really look carefully to identify these things it's not easy so yeah going down to flores or floors i don't know what they call it yeah flores um, from hoga island um, is two nights at sea uh, two days at sea two nights at sea and a little overwhelming to be going into the nights with these fads all over the show yeah, but still beautiful evening it's been beautiful sailing today um, it's just incredible how much wind we've had to, to push MP along. We've been averaging about eight and a half knot speed today um, in just beautiful winds. So there we are. Okay, well, we managed to get through the night free of hitting fads. Really tough. Watching the radar really closely and concentrating, um, sitting up all night. Here's a little fellow we came across heading off to a fishing fad uh, to go and catch his morning's breakfast, I guess, or take fish to the market. One of our friends, we were now catching up with the rally boats again. We'd left them and now catching up with them. One of our friends, not so lucky, had to cut his boat free after ending up on a fad. 
got jammed between his stern of his yacht and his dinghy. Terrible ordeal that was. Well, now we've uh, arrived in a beautiful little island called Sabolan, and it's right here at the entrance to Komodo, and we've just decided we're going to stop here and enjoy a bit of a rest and, and catch up after a hard night's worth of sailing. Uh, Sabalon later in the day gets very busy with tourists and um, it's really a touristy island. We can't spend time on it. We're now going to be heading down to Labuan Bajo. Now Labuan Bajo, uh, what we're looking forward to is that it has a green market and one can replenish supplies for the boat. As one's getting closer to this place, you can see it's really busy. It's kind of like getting back into the city again after being in the country. Uh, there's lots of different tourist boats around. There's dive boats, um, fishing boats, and people just off to see uh, the Komodo dragons, and it's, it's vibey. But the most important thing for us, of course, is restocking the boat. Yeah, you need some money. Here's Danny, the man with the taxi. Nice guy, nice guy. Oh, I see chilies. Yes, yes. Keeps my hair red. To buy. To buy, okay. Very nice shop, huh? Lovely, one more, one more. One more? Yeah, us. 10,000. One, 10,000? Okay, alright. Look on the. 65. Lucky we got Danny with us today. He's uh, keeping an eye on us yet. Yeah. It's really advisable to find a good taxi driver who can also negotiate on your behalf. It's worth paying him something extra to do this because otherwise one gets fleeced in these marketplaces. Well, from vegetables to fish, uh, we've managed to now stock up our boat uh, with all that we need and we are ready to roll and go out and explore the Komodo region to see the Komodo dragons. In this part of the world there are many many little islands. We, we can't share them all but we spent quite a while exploring many of them. place um, quite popular with cruisers they tend to come up here into this little anchorage I wouldn't say the diving's fantastic but perhaps we've just been spoiled um, up in Raj Pet. well here we're arriving on Mangyatan and the waters are crystal clear as you can see we've actually stopped here to make water uh, for the boat through our desalinator because the water is really perfectly clear These pink sandy beaches are one of the things many tourists come to see. You see photographs of them and they look super pink and obviously they have been uh, photoshopped but nonetheless they have a beautiful pink tinge in them. The sunsets here are just gorgeous and um, the whole place is just very different and interesting and it's vibey. Um, Mole is a little island that's not a recognized anchorage but we really had a great stop over here. This uh, was also amazing. It was pretty deep uh, to anchor here, but the wind shifted the stern of the boat uh, toward the island and we loved our time here. Absolutely amazing. Well, now we're going to just be skipping a lot of the islands we visited to head for Rinka, which is where we're going to go and see the Komodo dragons. So Komodo dragons are endemic to the islands of Komodo, Rinka, Rinka where we're coming to see them. Nusa Kadi and Gidi Montang. Now these islands are within the Komodo National Park area. Well we feel sorry for this fella uh, because he is definitely on the menu uh, for Komodo dragons. There are 1300 of them on Rinka which he has to avoid. They can accelerate to 20 kilometers per hour. Well we've signed into the park and we've met our um, guide for the park they do not allow you for obvious reasons to walk around here alone 
let's take a look at these guys. They're about to have a fight which is rare for visitors to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oi, oi, oi. Man, these things are wild. Oh, it's just incredible standing here in real time watching these things. Are they considered apex predators because they have no known predators in the wild? The study shows that they ooze venom not toxic bacteria into bites to weaken and ultimately kill their prey. Ah, it's just incredible. Monkey scatter and you can hear the scales on the back being ripped by nails. Incredible. Even the guide is excited. Uh, they seem to have these sort of bursts, you know, they fight and then they, they sort of take a chill pull and, and relax for a while before engaging in another fight. I'm not sure if the guide wanted a bigger tip or what, but apparently he was raving and telling us that we were very lucky to see them in this uh, performing in, in fights and so on. And uh, Matthias, um, you have babies from the eggs? Um. Uh, now ready. Yeah. But for next year, next year they can uh, hatchling. When they hatchling, the baby they can dig hole by themselves, coming up and direct climb on the trees for uh, protect themselves. Wow. Because the parent from the baby never the parental care for them. This is the nest. Yeah. They lay eggs. Yeah. They mate once a year, Matthias yeah. says. This is the young female. They guard the nest. Guarding, they guard their nest. Okay, so Matthias is taking us on a hike up the hill. Uh, some interesting facts about Komodo dragons while we walk there. They have a relatively weak bite at 39 newtons compared to 252 newtons for an Australian saltwater croc of the same size. But the powerful neck and sharp teeth are ideal for slashing prey open. Oh, there's MP. Where is your boat? Yeah. The catamaran. Yeah. The, the catamaran. The one at the back uh, against the green. Komodo dragons uh, really enjoy eating water buffalo and they can smell um, blood and the scent of death from nearly six miles away. Um, monkeys are clever, they seem to get away from them, um, but they do sort of take chances now and then. They're kind of almost human in a way that they want to taunt uh, these Komodo dragons, but then at the last minute they duck and disappear. Something that really worked in our favor, there were very few people on the island. Usually this is quite a tourist trap and there can be queues of people. Speaking about tourism, it may not be as open as it is today. Uh, local government is really fighting hard uh, to close the island to tourists en masse and to make it more achievable for people with money um, and much fewer people to be able to visit this region. Um, BBC News actually put up a beautiful YouTube video. Here's some extracts. I'd encourage you guys to watch it if you're interested. Komodo dragons with a venomous bite live here on just a handful of small islands in Indonesia. Soalnya kembar tadi ada hubung darah, hubung antara batu manusia dan. Increasing number of visitors now flock here to see this iconic species, and this man, the powerful governor of the region 
wants to close Komodo Island to mass tourism and expel the villagers. Di sana itu tidak ada human right, yang ada animal right. Jadi kalau tidak animal right, ya, yang dilindungi itu Komodo. Komodo dragons reach 10 feet in length and can weigh upwards of 300 pounds. They have shark-like teeth and poisonous venom that can kill a person within hours of a bite and a powerful tail that can bring down any prey. The National Park authorities say there have been 15 attacks in the last 10 years, just one that resulted in the death of a human. The Komodo Island community insists that before their village became part of the National Park in 1980, their relationship with the dragons was much friendlier. Pernah dulu tu tidur dengan manusia dia. Ancamannya orang berburu rusa. Untuk di lautnya kadang nelayan juga menggunakan alat yang tidak ramah lingkungan, terus menggunakan potasium dan bom. Yang jelas dampaknya merusak karang, terus untuk perkembang bagian ikan itu sudah pasti tidak dapat untuk anak cucu kita nantinya. Begitu juga kalau di darat, kalau perburuan rusa yang pasti Komodo juga sudah langka dan mati. With increased interest and money now coming in, a tussle for control of the park has broken out between the central and local government. A battle for Dragonland can become an exclusive place for just a handful of wealthy people. Penutupan satu tahun itu adalah Cara terbaik untuk kita bangun kembali. After that, it will cost a lot more than the few dollars you pay now to enter the park. The governor is proposing a 1,000 US dollar entrance fee for visitors. Okay, so that's the a glimpse of the BBC video. I hope it inspires you to go and look at it. It's a fantastic video. Well, we feel very privileged to have seen this uh, before they put exorbitant prices onto it. Anna and I are out of there and we've sailed to this very popular little a sandy spit on a reef and it's called Makassar Reef. A few places we got to swim with manta rays, but one of the favorite spots is here at Gili Banta. Oh, the anchorage here is pretty deep. Uh, we tried anchoring up against the reef, but we could feel it wasn't holding that great. So we found a great little opening in the reef, which allows enough swinging room and not to hit the boat keel against the reef, as it were. So that was fantastic for us. I hope you found this one helpful and interesting and um, right now I think we're going to wrap it up and we are going to in our next one be um, in Sumbawa, Sumbawa province where we will be swimming with whale sharks, diving with whale sharks, uh, riding buffaloes and uh, looking at the terrain there. Cheers everybody, MP out. <laughs>
the sea and the stars New Caledonia is in sight of our bound With a wheel in my hands and a thrill in our hearts We've crossed this great ocean to our port is La Foul Moose comes running and greets us again our old friends or new friends All we have and all we know Reaching out to learn more somehow Fly if you come The sea will work Sing their songs as they play in the sun The ocean runs through me like a vein of blue gold And my heart is again stolen like the sea songs of old Moose comes running and greets us again Our old friends or new friends All we have and all we know Reaching out to learn more something